Hey. Welcome everyone out there in internet land. <laughs> We're doing our next Google Hangout. Uh, I'm Josh Farrell, Wine Director of Wine Express. Eric is from Silverstein. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just right. married. Marshall, Marshall Tilton <laughs> are joining me for this tasting of three fabulous under-the-radar Cabernets. Um, I was out in California about uh, two months ago, maybe, and you know there's a lot of wine out there. Exactly. And although, you know, we're in New York, and most wine, you know, gets it from California to New York, from Europe to New York, South America to New York, all over. New York's kind of a good place to be if you're into wine. But if you go to California and you lift up a couple of rocks and you look behind a couple of bushes, you can find stuff that maybe isn't around in New York. Right. And that's well, what we did. I'm sure these labels don't look familiar to most out there because it's really a uh, uh, first time, you know, as wine consumers, I, I've never seen any of these wines yeah. on the open market, you know. Yeah, they're not, uh, they're, first of all, the production on, on them is very small. So there isn't a lot of wine to go out there. <laughs> but uh, and second of all, you know, a lot of it just gets sold right from the wineries or right locally. Um, so and you found these for a meeting right directly with the wineries, right? Yeah. The family-owned um, boutique operations. I was at an event, uh, the family-owned wineries event, which was a really great event. It was um, uh, a gathering of of small wineries pouring their wares, meeting people, and uh, of course, did a little traveling around as well. Um, and on my travels, when I discovered uh, this wine, which is called Kuyam, 13 Moons, uh, 2008, it's actually a red blend. This is the one wine that's really not technically a cab. It's 37% <laughs> cab, 35 Merlot, 13 Malbec, uh, 15 Verdot, yeah. 8 Malbec, and 4 Cab Franc, something like that, right? <laughs> so it's really like a Bordeaux blend. But what I think uh, makes this wine interesting is the cab in it is is old vine cab. Uh, the winery owner uh, Dave Corey, very interesting guy, who's uh, he's a viticulturalist and he's an entomologist, and so he works has worked with a lot of wineries um, with their vineyards just to keep their vineyards going and to make them sustainable and do all this great stuff. So he knows of these vineyards that maybe a lot of uh, other wineries aren't familiar with. Sure. So he sourced these grapes from this. 3,000 foot vineyard in Santa Barbara, great high altitude, and uh, from Old Vines Cabernet. Of course, you know, he, he also sourced the, the Merlot and the other grapes as well and, and blended it together into a Merlot because he, he kind of likes to mix things up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he can't quite read it, but um, Kuyam, the name means a place to rest together. It's a Native American, right. so it's kind of it's a nod American to focus. So, yeah. all the grapes resting and blending together. Yeah, absolutely, and also a nod to the to the local terroir. It's an yeah. 08 too, which is yeah. So it's which is yeah. surprising on the nose, not on the color. The color, I mean, you can really tell some of the age, but it, it's it's yeah, very it's really still bit. very vibrant on the nose, right? I mean, absolutely. It's a really it's really deep, forward, for deep sure. inky color. Yeah. 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 What do you get on the nose? Uh, I mean, on top of the kind of classic cow the Cassis and getting some some black cherry, some red cherry too, but it's got this really cool like um like floral, like violets. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. right. That's what I get too. Yeah. that's floral that really kind of And I think uh, a lot of that, which again it has Petit Verdot, but it has like thirty percent, which is a lot. Usually they do five percent, yeah. six percent. And I think Petit Verdot, as it ages, gets older, it can give off that kind of violet uh, aroma. It's kind of prominent. All right, mm, tasting it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to taste. I'm liking what I taste, mm. which, you know, I knew I would. <laughs> so what do you get? Well, what I, what I wow. get is, is this incredible, soft, yeah. very brightly fruity, um, nicely aged wine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the bottle age obviously has, has allowed the tannins to subside, yeah. and the wine has become very supple, and it, you know, and it brought out a lot of the fruit and some of these earthier tones are also under there. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. When I say it's bright and fruity, it's still dry. Mm -hmm. it finishes dry. It's a wonderful right. dry mm -hmm. one. But it's uh, you know, the, the, the fruit component is, is very vibrant. Very vibrant. I mean, it's 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 racy almost for uh yeah. for a, mm -hmm. a wine this old, which is the acidity is just really 
coming through and, and holding it together so well. Tannins are very smooth too, really I'm nicely sure. integrated. It, it feels like a really good food line. I mean, any of these high acid yeah. cab blends and Gordo blends I always find. Yeah, Erica's mm -hmm. a very accomplished <laughs> food, <laughs> for lack of a better, better term. What do you think you're going to match up with this? Um, you know, I'd love it with something a little exotic, like maybe a lamb with some spices, cumin, and mm. like a roast, but it could be great for, right? yeah, that would be great. Getting like some of the spices off that way, mm -hmm. like that cumin, that kind of Indian. Yeah, yeah or like a rosemary yeah. kind of thing, uh, yeah. some lamb skewers and the barbecue, yeah. that sounds does. really good. You know what I feel like, it's for a cab lover, it's a great uh, pizza and pasta wine too, because of the acidity and the bright fruit, you know, it's yeah. something that you can have with like a tomato sauce, like you hang around, but, it, over uh, power, it but you don't need the, the meat and the spices for this wine just to counteract the tannins because the tannins are already counteracted right, yeah. through the bottle age. Yeah. So that's the one thing that you really yeah. have to keep in mind about this wine. I think we got to move. Let's do it. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's do the two. next wine. Wine number two. The next two wines are actually Napa Valley wines. That um, was Santa Barbara. That yeah. was Santa Barbara, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, also accounts for a lot of the right kind of food, a little cooler <laughs> climate. Well, Penny. Penny, right. This is a... Uh, Napa Cab called The Song. It's from Singer Sellers. Um, I think it's kind of the name is sort of self explanatory. Um, it's a 2010. Singer is a very, very small winery. They produce all of, I don't know, six or seven hundred cases in total of about five different wines. This one, I think they only made like. 82? Yeah, 82 cases. Yeah, I've never Great. seen that. <laughs> I mean, it just shows cases. how you're, yeah. you're really not going to find this. How often do you taste the wine where there's only an 82 case production, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> anyway, uh, I met Barry Singer at this event, and uh, he was there with these wines, and he was a very, really nice guy, very easy to talk to, very unassuming, and uh, I thought he had terrific wines. Um, this one is a, a wine that he sources grapes from a particular vineyard in Oak Knoll that he's uh, got a relationship with. So, of course, Oak Knoll, southern part of Napa, a little bit cooler than, than some of the other parts of Napa. Um, but, you know, it's all Napa Valley. Right. But um, he blends in a little bit of Merlot, a little bit of Cab Franc, and uh, ages in all French oak. So... I'm excited and, to try this one. Yeah, I, I had the Kuyan before. I, I haven't had the uh, the song before. It nope. smells like it's got a lot of layers and a lot of yeah. What, what are you getting? I'm getting uh, I'm getting a lot more of that kind of black currant, kind of the dried uh, dried out dark fruit. Yeah, um, yeah. A lot of like sort of more high toned aromas. Yeah. yeah. Um, I get some licorice. Mm -hmm. yep, and I get sure. a little bit of the little bit of eucalyptus or mint. Yeah. The cocoa powder. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, 2010, you know, was um, a much cooler vintage yeah, in Napa. So your grapes uh, ripened over a longer period of time. They had a lot more time to develop different kinds of flavors. Uh, some of the big jammy flavors really didn't come in a lot of times. Yeah. What you guys are tasting. It is really soft. Um, the tannins, even for a younger wine, are, are, are mellowing and it's smooth. Um, I, I read about this that they actually started leaves on these, like they do. Yeah. Chardonnay. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. You talk about that, that a little. So uh, what they do with a lot of chardonnays is they they, they will stir the, the wine lots in the barrel on the leaves to add texture, to soften it, to add mouthfeel, and it's really almost specifically done with whites. With whites, yeah. you know, to give them some richness. And he's doing it with and the red. And he does it on the red. So and it works because it really is a, a nice, soft texture. You know, you'd think that it may be a little bit overpowering, but then it kind of balances out really nicely. It's, it's very, coated. very luscious. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it creates mouthfeel. Absolutely. And maybe you're not going to get otherwise. Yeah. I wonder if some other winemakers are going to copy him now after <laughs> tasting this. He's only making 82 cases, so they yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might have to ramp up production. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, also to point out is that, you know, he sent... Um, of his 700 cases and five wines, he sent you know a, a few wines for us, and this really we selected as being the standout yeah. of the wines that he sent. So you know we weren't bringing in everything he sent, and, and all the wines were good. This was great, and we found that this really to be uh, something that we could we could offer. Right, and also uh, the price was absolutely yeah, phenomenal the price for, for this. For yeah, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. so we love it. Yeah, what is this? Like, 35, 35, 35. Uh, yeah, 35. Yeah. 
Great. Case discount, Happy of course. Case discount. Great. And everything's available now if you want to search any of these wines on the site mm -hmm. or uh, even buy them. They're available today. Whiteexpress.com. <laughs> so what are you matching up with this? Mm. It's got to be some sort of uh, some sort of meat. Some, 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 yeah, some kind of yeah. Of this, this, this is a little beefier than the uh, <laughs> than the cool young. Yeah, yeah but it has it has some elegance. Like I could even do does. turkey or something, turkey burgers. Right. You know. Well, or even like uh, a roast turkey or a smoked yeah. turkey, something like that. Some smoky, yeah. Might work with it. Yeah. Mhm. Mm um, it's great. Yeah, it's good. So anyway, I guess we don't have to pour it out. Oh yeah, we don't. Yeah, of course. And. Feel free to ask any questions about any of these wines all through the Hangout as we're tasting. Um, if you have anything more that you want to know about them, we're, we're here and we're available to answer anything that's on your mind. And this last wine is Napa Valley, but it's from Rutherford in Napa Valley. Uh, this is a family-owned vineyard right in the Rutherford bench. And it's... Uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Chex. But I was up there tasting... Uh, uh, John was pouring wine for everybody, and they were asking how do you pronounce it, and he was saying, Chex rhymes with sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what it is. It's Chex. And this is a, going to be a racy wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think you might have something. <laughs> but it's fourth generation vineyard um, right in the heart of the Rutherford Bench. They've been supplying grapes to all those pretty wineries in Napa Valley for many, many years, and now they've uh, started to produce some of their own wine. Wow. Yeah. And if you're not familiar with Rutherford versus other regions of Napa, it's super exclusive and it's known for this Rutherford dust oh, yeah. character. Um, oh, we have a question. So we can start buying these now. They're available. Go to winespress.com and just put in the search box any of these wines. They'll pop right up for you. Mm -hmm. Chex is uh, C-H-A-I-X. And this is 100% uh, cap, right? No blend. All cap. Yeah, 100% cap from their vineyard. Uh, they selected a, a, an older block planted in 1991 for this wine. Uh, they're aging in uh, French oak for 22 months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it comes I, off. So, I, mean, I think I just walked into a spa. It's yeah. like eucalyptus. <laughs> uh, all it's over the it's place. also a 2010, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mention that. Lots of that uh, smoke cedar forest floor. Yeah. Lot of that, uh, really it's classic. just like a sauna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cedar aromas <laughs> right. and yeah. eucalyptus in the steam room. It's really uh, got a lot of. I like carry there, too. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. The one at, uh, mineral. I got a nice mineral. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The liquor is still hanging around there too on the back end. Um, they hired a, a young winemaker, Sam Baxter. He's uh, son of Phil Baxter, who was uh, was a kind of a very storied Napa Valley winemaker. Was a winemaker at Rutherford Hill for a long, long time. I actually met him once when he was there, and uh, at Souverain and, and a lot of other wineries. Started his own wineries, so really knows the uh, knows the terrain. And I guess passed on a lot to his son, who's also, of course, a UC Davis graduate. And this is tiny production, too, right? Like two or three hundred yeah, cases? Yeah, this is a 300 case production. That's what I saw, yeah. It's a special one. So, yeah. I got a taste of it. Wow. Another good fruit wine, yeah. because it's not. Too overpowering. Yeah. It's nice and balanced. No, it's, and it's so smooth. it's so elegant. Yeah. No, I was actually expecting it more to be uh, like that fruit bomb kind of style. I was yeah. expecting it to be just massive, and it's not. No, it's yeah. so elegant. It's, it's really elegant. elegant. It's so nicely intertwined. Uh, the tannins are really polished. <laughs> this is a lovely wine. Um, you know, they talk about uh, this <laughs> theoretical Rutherford dust, right, right? Yeah. And I guess there's discussion about what that actually refers to. Um, from from what I've discovered um, the uh, it really refers to more to a sort of a lush fruit character uh, an intensity and elegance um, that this wine definitely has Completely. more than an, you know, an actual sort of dusty or earthy <laughs> right 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 and that's not really what it's about someone had an interesting question about the, the ratings the, a lot of these yeah. wines are, are so under you know the radar that they, they don't get rated I mean, yeah. they, they don't have, they don't send them in. They don't have to because, like Josh said, a lot of times they're just some of them at the winery. Yeah, there might be some ratings out there somewhere. There may be yeah, right, but we didn't really research it. Yeah, but but uh, our say, our rating yeah. is high. 
<laughs> yeah, her, and I will say just to just also add, you know, we were doing a little bit of research specifically on the checks before we tasted just to give you guys a little bit more information. And you know, Josh knew that it was a special wine when he brought it in, but we we uh, we dug up an article from the, the examiner about this Rutherford Dust Society tasting, right, right. and the checks was tasted alongside. Wines you may have heard of, such as Fremark Abbey, uh, Vivi yeah, Latour. Yeah, Saint Marlene, Vivi Latour. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're wondering, you know, what kind of caliber to put so. these wines in, uh, it really showed well in the tasting, and it right. really gave it. Um, stood, stood right up there it with stood the big out. boys. Absolutely, what a and long, it's a fraction of the price. What a long finish. I mean, as we're sitting here, right? It's like you can hang around. Fraction of the price. Don't miss that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A large you know, fraction. The finish lingers. What about ageability on this? Oh, this has got this has got it all. I mean, this has got nice front tannins, like fruits all there. Concentration. Yeah, I mean, this is it's drinking really nicely now. Could certainly use some food, but I mean, this has got to be a you know a seven to ten year kind of age. Right? This is better. Yeah, you know, it sounds crazy, but I almost because it's it's. It's big, but it's it's lean at the same time. I'd almost have it with like some pasta or something. Pasta, like, with a really nice that sounds crazy. Sauce. <laughs> or even something creamy. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be with meat. Um, well, you know, these wines are also really good with cheeses. Yes, you know, that would put be together a really nice cheese or uh, like a gouda flavor. or a cheddar or something. Sure, hard cheese or even even some rich soft cheeses. I just went back to the Green. song. And it's really yeah, cool down there. to go back and forth on these two. Now go back to the song yeah. after yeah. that. After that checks. I mean, because they're both so good and, and no, made so well. Noses are so distinct. It's so right? distinct, right? Isn't it amazing that I mean that Rutherford dust or whatever that mm -hmm. whatever the theoretical uh, component is. I mean, it just gives it a different characteristic. But that song is um, yeah. To moment. me, just just sum it up very quickly. The singer wine is is a, is real kind of spicy wine, and the Czech wine is really kind of a lush, fruity wine. Yeah. Yeah. Kuya, of course, is, is a, another, another one uh, entirely because of the bottle. Mm -hmm. It's uh, sort of complex and, and supple. So. Yeah, and, and for under 20, I think that one, the Kuya, right? Which is. Yeah. That's, that's a, that kind of a price for a California cab. I don't know. I mean, a Bordeaux wine. Yeah, right. And, that, and, a, and a mature one. We, uh, we've already done the aging for you. Right. <laughs> you don't have to put it in your cellar. You just have to open every day. Mm -hmm. These wines are all thirty-five and under. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, no, the, the checks is something. It's oh, really yeah. checks okay. Forty and under. Still, yeah. still really good for mm -hmm. for boutique uh, caps from California, whether it be Napa or Santa Barbara or Absolutely. wherever. Right. And that was our that was our aim. That was our focus, and I think we've achieved it. Absolutely. <laughs> So we hope you'll yeah. give them a try. And, uh, and if you have questions uh, after this hangout, you think of things, you know, always email us, call us. We're here, and we love talking about wine. So uh, <laughs> don't be afraid. Yes, call we do. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Join us again. Cheers. Have a great weekend.